head because Dean hates Fred. <laughs> that that one made me laugh, especially the drag race where <laughs> the Mystery Machine won. Of course, it was going to win because he had to pay tribute to the original Supernatural type show. The idea of a Scooby Doo live action film, the <laughs> same. <laughs> Because it was it was funny because I love how they did like the it was an old episode they did like they ended up reusing the uh, synopsis of the original one where Scooby Doo inherited the money and it was just really hilarious and funny <laughs> and I love the one part where. Uh, Daphne and Velma and all of them were going to turn into bed. Dean goes, I'll bunk with you tonight, Daphne. And I forget what it was. And uh, Daphne was like, I'm going to bunk with Velma. You know, girls, boys, you know. And Fred's like, it's just you and me now, partner. <laughs> A buster. <laughs> it's just like, that, that one cracked me up because... Because <laughs> it was just... It was funny, because I really like how they they give Fred sort of like a, they sort of like give his character more personality, because if you watch like the original show, he's always focused on like traps and catching the bad guy, and because <laughs> it was just, and now they add like layers to him, which I like now. From Scooby-Doo Mystery Incorporated to even Be Cool Scooby-Doo, they sort of give him humor. And I first didn't like Be Cool Scooby-Doo, now I sort of have a love for it. Because it's just funny. The idea for a live-action Scooby-Doo movie languished in development hell throughout most of the 90s. 1996, 1996, Jim Carrey was attached to play Shaggy. And Sarah Gilbert was attached to play Velma. At one point, Kevin Smith was attached, but later dropped out. Later, Mike Myers accepted uh, accepted the project and was on was the one who the most often had his name linked to it. Myers' friend Janine Garofalo was supposed to was supposedly tapped by Myers to play Velma. Eventually, Myers left the project. Yeah. Mike Myers would have been great, I think, as Shaggy. He kind of has that look to play Shaggy, but he also has that humor that sort of goes all ranged. Like, uh, Jim Carrey, I could definitely see playing Shaggy throughout the film. So, I if there was one film I want to see Jim Carrey in is Plastic Man. I think he would be perfect as Plastic Man. I seen the one show he's in, which is uh, Kidding, but the new film he's doing, like Sonic the Hedgehog, I don't look forward to seeing. <laughs> I I just think it looks awful. Hopefully, I'm wrong. Might be good, but anytime they do a movie based on a video game, it's always like bad news. You just know something bad's gonna happen. <laughs> So, let's get to the story of the film. The film centers, this first film centers around the gang teaming up to catch the Luna Ghost. I was going to say Luma, but it would make sense. The Luna Ghost, however, the long time, I kind of like Sonic. I do too. I like the video games. But when they released the new trailer, it just looked so weird. Like, it just... Like, he just looks so weird. <laughs> like, he... You know, it, the thing is, it's like... They... I don't know if it was like... One of them said, like, it wasn't finished. But they needed more work. And it's like, you know, if... It needed, no, it needed more work. Why did you release the trailer so early if you needed 
more time to fix things up. I, I mean, Jim Carrey looks good in the film. But it's just... Sonic himself just looks so messed up. And it's like, I'm not going to say, like, a lot of video games have bad luck with movies. I mean, Detective Pikachu was a success. And I think, you know, it's like uh, Mario. It's like Mario Brothers was good. Same. Um, But it was just so... It's kind of weird, though. It's like, Mario Brothers is like one of those films that is an episode for itself. (laughs) Yeah, the company said they'll change the look. Oh, that's good. I'm happy. Now, I'm I'm on board for that one. I remember someone did, like, an edit of Sonic where it has, like, the the movie, the trailer one, and they have, like, the original, like, with the new design and touch-ups. And it looked good, you know. I haven't seen Detective Pikachu, so... (laughs) I might see it. I might check it out. I I bought Shazam, and I haven't even seen that movie yet. Because Sonic fans are sad about the look. I I am too. (laughs) Yeah. I haven't seen uh, Shazam yet, so... I bought it. It's weird, though. I bought it on DVD, and I haven't watched it. I don't know what's wrong with me. <laughs> so. Let's see. Oh, I have the Pikachu. Pika Pika. <laughs> Pikachu. <laughs> it's kind of funny, though, because it's like... Uh, one film I'm hoping they would make and do right is The Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. I know they did a Power Rangers movie, but I heard it wasn't that good. It, the um, the ninety show was so weird. It was like I remember watching the show. And my favorite Power Ranger was the Blue Ranger because blue is my favorite color, <laughs> kind of. Now it kind of changed. I like I like purple and. Red and yeah, you know. but I still have the Blue Ranger action figure my grandma bought me. So, um, anyway, Scooby Doo. It was the the gang starts out with the gang, you know, kidnapping the Luna Ghost. And the gang splits up, leaving Shaggy and Scooby heartbroken. (laughs) Smirk emoji. (laughs) And Shaggy and Scooby get invited to a party by a person who promised all you can eat. I like the island theme park concept because, like, when you think about it, like... I thought when when I first saw it, it was like the island theme park. I remember going like, "This is gonna be like Scooby on Zombie Island, where everyone is like possessed and they become zombies." And it kind of is like that, but it just was so weird. Is I don't know what it is. It's like, yeah, it's like the weirdest thing. It's like they turn into like monsters or something. And it, I don't know what kind of monsters it were. I think it was like demons or something. And and the thing about it was they weren't scary. Like, I don't understand why they did a lot of the movie. They did, like, I wouldn't say a lot of it, but some, like, I mean, half of it was in daylight and part of it was at night and daylight again. It was... It kind of took the scare factor of the movie off. Because it's like when you watch the old show, like, yeah, they did it, you know, they did mysteries, they solved mysteries at night, and of course the um, the new Scooby-Doo cartoons, they did it in the daylight, but it's like, 
this movie should have been like basically at night. It should be like dark and at night. Kind of like a scare factor added to it. They took that out and just basically the movie the first movie was basically um a comedy. Like I don't mind the comedy aspect of Scooby Doo because Scooby Doo is funny and you know, tongue in cheek humor. But I really wanted like a Scooby Doo on Zombie Island type film. I wanted something that scary and creepy and dark and you know, fun. This movie I mean it's not a bad movie. Looking back on it, it's kind of cringy, but it's fun. It's a fun cringe. Because, you know, you have you know, Matthew Lillard who's now still to this day doing the voice of Shaggy. And you have Buffy the Vampire Slayer as you know, Daphne, and you have uh Freddie Prince Jr. as Fred Jones and i be honest, I don't know what films Freddie Prince Jr. was in. And the actress who played Velma did a wonderful job. I thought she I thought she did a perfect job as Velma. You know, she really brought Velma Dinkley to life, so And of course she went on to do like Scooby Doo Mystery Incorporated and the regular show and Gravity Falls and Sanjay and Craig. So, anyway, um, so they end up going through the mystery of trying to figure out what happened to all the theme park goers. They're hired by Mr. Bean to do it. (laughs) Um, I like the airport scene between Fred and Scooby. Where Scooby, <laughs> Scooby's dressed as a grandma, and Fred doesn't recognize <laughs> Scooby in a dress, and Scooby comes up, kisses Fred on the cheek, and <laughs> it's, I thought it was funny and hilarious. So they get on the plane. I love the one joke. This shows kind of, the movie kind of shows Fred's arrogance, where he writes a biography about himself, Fred on Fred, by Fred Jones. And he's reading his biography on the plane. (laughs) That kind of made me laugh. Because it's like, it's definitely something Fred would do. Uh, Let's see. Uh, I love the one joke. Shaggy falls in love with a girl named Mary Jane. For those who don't know, Mary Jane is another term for marijuana. (laughs) Who loves eating Scooby snacks, but is allergic to dogs, which is kind of weird. (laughs) Funny, but weird. Uh, Let's see. Uh, Mondorosa? Oh, that's the theme park dude, sorry. Claims that visiting tourists have been cursed into brainwashed state. Velma believes... (laughs) Velma believes there is... Velma attends a ritualistic performance performed by Nigo Tuana and his henchman, Zarkos, a famous luchador. Nigo claims that the island is ruled by ancient demons and have been plotting their revenge ever since they were displaced and Mandarosa... Oh, displeased that Mondorosa built a resort. <clears throat> I I like the idea, the aspect of that story. That story that it's pretty bad that the character gives a better story than the movie about the island. I wish they did more on the island. They, you know, told more stories about it. Um, but it's so. It's disappointing that they took a, a interesting concept of a theme park island haunted and people are possessed and brainwashed but they really didn't do an aspect of the supernatural thing to it so 
And it's revealed at the end of it that 